So hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. So I had a really cool idea for the production of this video. Uh, if you're out of the loop, and you might be, uh, Kefka won, uh, betrayed Emperor Gestal, killed him, destabilized the Warring Triad, destroyed the world, the world of balance as we're coming to know it now, because apparently that was written in the manuals, and created this new exciting world, the, ru the world of ruin. And so, as this has happened, we've had a time jump now where Celeste is kind of the main character. Though, some of you guys in the comments have pointed out that actually it feels like all the characters could be main characters if you like. They all seem to have like complete arcs. Anyway, we're getting the band back together again. We started with just Celeste, and now we've been, you know, figuring out what the hell's gone on with all of our characters a year in the future. You guys in the comments said that technically only three of the party members from before have to come back, and you can beat the game with just three. All the rest are optional. But I don't know exactly who those are or what right now like we unlocked Sabin already uh, but many people skip him like in speed runs and stuff so anyway that's what I'm doing I'm exploring the world we're seeing what we've got do you know what I thought it'd be really fun for this video to help us really get into the mindset of the world of ruin well there's this time skip right and in law it took a year to get our characters back and see what they're up to so I thought genius level content creator that I am I would wait a year before continuing this let's play amazing right um, <laughs> Okay, all right, uh, or I'm a fool and um, we just had a long break. I'm really sorry about that everyone Seriously, I'm very sorry that it has been a year since the last part I won't go into the whole conversation again being serious now uh, Just in case you already saw me talk about this with my channel update or the reference in a recent Guild Wars 2 video Or a reference in the Guild Wars 2 stream I did or if you watched the new Tomb Raider episode because that series went on break for a year but the gist of it is that I'm scrapping the live video thing. You'll notice that this video was not uploaded live when it first came out. I'm producing the end of this series now as regular LP episodes where I can put a little bit more effort into them. That's basically sums it up. As far as the live chat is concerned, I suppose I could, in theory, keep doing like live premiere episode launches that might be fun but i don't think i'll pilot that just yet we'll try that off in the future uh so i do want to be clear the live chats were awesome they really were and a very big thank you to everyone using them it's actually kind of mind-boggling to me how complex this game is and how some of you guys like as enthusiastic and as knowledgeable as you are about final fantasy 6 you guys dropped so many amazing messages there as things went along and then obviously in the regular comments too um, so getting back into the game here, the fact we're in the middle of a thousand things has kind of made it really hard to pick back up after I haven't played it for a year. So there's a lot coming up in this episode. There's a lot we're going to do. Oh, here, and check this out. I'm about to get utterly destroyed by these T-Rexes that surrounded me. Man, I'll tell you, if you're going to put dinosaurs in your RPG, have them be badasses, and that's what Six does here. I'm going to get game over from these things. All right, so serious recap time. We basically, we hit the world of ruin. And we got a ton of trivia from you guys in the comments and in game. I had ideas of things that I wanted to do. I got advice. And then I kind of just forged it on ahead and I did like the next episode. And then the next video, about two episodes ago, I heard about a bunch more stuff and I forged on ahead. And then we did it again and again. So, like, there was a mountain of things I should have looked at and thought between episodes, okay, let's actually go do this thing. And I kind of just let it all get on top of me. Really? I should have stopped, rewatched the episodes, made some notes, and figured out what was going on. It's kind of funny. I basically hit end game and was flooded with things to do in both this game and in Tomb Raider at the same moment. Then I put the games aside because there was other stuff going on. And, yeah, there's, like, a mountain to do. So... Coming back here, first, the footage in the background, while I currently speak, because this is post-commentary right now, is me leveling up a little bit, because I felt a bit weak, especially with Setzer, who's so crap, is unreal, and sort of re-familiarizing myself with our current party in gear, and basically what I've done is I've played the game while listening back to the recent episodes and making notes of the things that I want to do. So, to recap, at the end of the last part, we just got Valagarmanda, the Esper, who gave us the, the, the Gur spells, Farrar Gur and Blizzard Gur and so on, and they're really strong. So what I'm doing here is grinding to unlock just a couple of those. The other thing is Gao. If you look at his max HP there, he's got almost none. Gao is a really low level. And uh, if you remember, we got that growth egg, double XP, from that uh, puzzle in the previous part. Well, I'm going to give him the growth egg, and I'm going to try and level him up and Mog a bit too, who I've got some fun, exciting builds. I think uh, most people are around level 30 at the moment, and Gao is like down to level 20. So I'm getting him to level 30 before we cut to uh, the first big adventure we're going to go on here. This is a really good grind spot, as it turns out, because I can just do whatever, go into the house, and rest for free and get all my health back you know cleanse all the poison and whatever that's what's going on there weirdly enough as well in this year gap and i was amazed to see this when i first booted the game again 
Uh, there have been a couple of patches. Seriously. Square Enix are actually patching the Pixel remasters, even quite a bit now after their release. Nothing too major as far as I can see from the notes here. I'll put them on screen for you guys if you want to pause the video. But uh, basically what it seems to be, and I might have mentioned this ages ago actually, but the Pixel remasters on the PlayStation editions had slightly more stuff going on than Steam and PC had. And this patch is kind of bringing everything together, so now you get it on PC as well. So, like, you can swap between new and old music, like the remastered music that they made for all this, or the actual classic music. Uh, and then there's a suite of what are essentially cheats, like the ability to gain more XP, like up to four times. You can, like, double XP, quadruple XP, or you can do the same for, like, AP and for Gil. You know how Valagomanda, like, we only get a one-time spell learning rate from that Esper? Well, you could drop all the AP if you like to get around that, but you guys in the comments have said that we can find some grind spots where you get a lot more a lot quicker, so... Yeah, I'm avoiding these for now, but they do seem quite handy. Probably the craziest thing I read in these patch notes was that there's some actual, like, combat balance. So, quick weird story here, right? This game has an Esper Odin, the Odin Esper. Odin appears in a bunch of Final Fantasy games. And I don't really know what the whole deal is here, but apparently you can upgrade it into another Esper at some point. I guess we'll see when we get there. It's kind of cool to hear that that's a mechanic, by the way, because it might sound familiar to you. If you've ever played Final Fantasy VIII, a similar thing happens. You get Odin, and then he upgrades before the end of the game to a new Esper into Gilgamesh in that game. Well, they're not called Espers there, are they? They're called GFs, Guardian Forces. Silly me. So I guess that thing in FF8 was a reference to Odin here back in 6 all along. So, though to be clear, Odin won't upgrade into Gilgamesh in this game. Uh, it's something else. And I guess I'll keep the name uh, aside so we don't spoil it or whatever. Anyway, why I'm talking about all this is there's a weird thing where I think Odin is like the only Esper that provides speed on level up. So if you then go through upgrading him, it goes away. The new guy is strength and your only opportunity for speed disappears. So you kind of get screwed. It's, it, and like on speed runs and stuff and people who play the game really like perfectionist wise, they, they don't like upgrading the Esper because they want to keep the speed modifier guy. So it's a known thing. And well, this patch years later has sort of rectified it by saying that the new Esper you get will also be speed now and you're not punished for upgrading. Like, that's mad to me. You know, this game came out in 1996 and they're still doing like little bits of combat balance. That's kind of cool. Uh, so the other thing as well, is, as far as cheats are concerned, is you can now toggle encounters on and off. Uh, if you're playing on a PlayStation controller, it's like right clicking in one of the analog sticks. So really easy to access. It's a toggle on demand. On PC, it's just by tapping F3, which again is very close to WSD. That's actually insanely tempting and convenient to use. It's such a wild thing to me that, you know, according to the old design, I don't think they ever would have thought, wow, give, give people the ability to turn off random encounters like that would be OP as far as they would have been concerned while making this game I'm sure but nowadays I guess the notion of opting in to random encounters in like JRPGs is fairly mundane like I don't think it's necessarily a terrible thing obviously these games often have uh, gear that affects encounter rate like double encounters half encounters no encounters and ironically enough Mog who we just got uh, has some unique equipment. I haven't found it yet, but has some like special equipment that only Mog can equip in this game That is no encounters. I think it's back up at Nash and I missed it in the previous episode So that's kind of funny. It used to be a part of the game now They just say yeah, just tap F3 and you'll get the same function uh, I remember the Steam edition of Final Fantasy X also kind of had this remaster treatment Like where they had these sorts of cheat codes and the the soundtrack toggle and stuff My let's play of Final Fantasy X was actually made before the Steam launch even existed Existed. I was using a capture card for my PlayStation 3. It's weird to think back on actually. I think the mega stream I did of like all the bestiary, bestiary entries at the end of X2 was the Steam version and that was really handy because I could like edit my save file and stuff. But that was like the last thing I shot for the whole show. Anyway, speaking of bestiaries, this patch also has a major feature where you can now access the bestiary screen from like a better place in game. I think before it was only on the title menu and now it's actually in game where people were expecting it. And you can use the bestiary menu to like instantly port into any combat scenario you like. You can pick enemy formations and you can rebattle bosses or whatever. I don't think you get the loot or the XP or keep anything that you steal. It's just kind of for fun. 
Uh, but it's there. So, patches. Literally just a couple of weeks before I started recording this episode, uh, these patches came out. Uh, who knows if they'll do more? The Steam forums, which I've definitely been reading way too much of lately, are riddled with toxicity and anger about this and, like, really nitpicky little aspects of the patch. But, uh, like, apparently some people get, like, little frame issues. But overall, I'm just happy and shocked that they did anything. Um, so there you go. I thought I'd catch you a little bit of gaming news there about FF6 in the middle of the LP. So, um... Let's recap the story. As far as the main quest is concerned, right now, as I say, we're gathering our party. But what do we do? Well, we back began as Celeste, and sadly, Sid died, even though there was a crazy hidden thing where we could have saved him. You know, very typical Final Fantasy story there. But this is a blind let's play from me, so, you know, I missed that. But we started as Celeste. Then, very quickly, we got Sabin. We went back to Zen, if you remember, and it was burning down. Kefka attacked it with this thing they called the Light of Judgment. Um, and we got him. Edgar was next, I'm pretty sure. He'd restyled himself as a leader of thieves called Gerard, or Gerard, uh, you know, which was an anagram of the name. And um, we went to Figaro Castle, which was stuck underground, and everyone was suffocating, and we saved everyone. We fought those tentacles in the engine, and he rejoined us. Next, there was a good bit about Setsa. Uh, we found him again. We got a bunch of his backstory. We learned that he had a girlfriend called Daryl, uh, and she died, and we were talking about whether that's a man's name or a woman's name, but she had died in an airship crash. She used to like like racing airships and tuning them up. She died in a crash and sort of never came home to him. So uh, we went with Setsa to her tomb. That was where I did that crazy puzzle, the world is square or whatever, and felt like a genius for figuring it out. And um, we found out that Setzer had like rebuilt her airship. Her airship was called the Falcon. And so now we have an airship. We're flying around in the Falcon. Because if you remember the Blackjack, Setzer's original airship, that got destroyed uh, as we were jumping off of the floating co continent and the Cataclysm landed. So we have the Falcon now. And I don't actually remember if I've explored very much of the Falcon. I guess I'll have a little bit of a look at that later. Um, so then there was this whole thing with Mog, getting Mog back. For a lot of players, the first time they ever get Mog is here in the World of Ruin. But we got him in the World of Balance, and that allowed us to unlock some like extra skills from him by going in that underwater trench. Anyway, so Mog was back at Nash, and sadly, like all those other -po 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 Moogles are dead. So he's the only one. He was all alone. I have read on Wiki now, as a weird behind the scenes, that apparently, for a long time in the dev of this game, they had some weird idea that the Moogles weren't all dead. You'd go in the cave and there'd be 20 of them running around and you had to find Mog among them and if you found him, then he'd join your party. But they found like the mini game annoying, so they cut it out. I feel <laughs> that's a bit of a shame actually. That'd be kind of interesting to go back to. This game actually has such a ridiculous, rich, wild heritage of like uncut, unfinished, like sneaky content that you can find in the data files that never manifested. And I guess I'll give you guys a little bit more trivia about that as we go along. I don't know it all for now but certainly that mog story is one of them but we, we we basically just got mog and then this was right near the end of the last episode we went to go get gal so gal was in the veldt just wandering around and uh we quickly taught him how to be and i quote a fine young man that was a really weird and like awkward story I, I think we sort of sequence broke it a little bit because there's meant to be a bit of story with cyan about this like where cyan says that gals return to the vault but the the vault but we don't have cyan himself yet uh, so i'm not sure about all that anyway we took gal to the crazy old guy with the clock alone in his house and it's pretty clear that that man that old man is his dad but we couldn't really reunite them which was really sad actually it's sort of this tragic backstory where we find out the mum died, the dad went mad with grief, as far as it looks like anyway. Uh, he thought that Gao, the baby, Gao, was a demon and abandoned him on the veld. And, uh, and he's just sort of been living there, pottering around ever since. There was also a really weird, and I think I need to pay attention to this, there was a really weird broken bit of the story in the last episode where the clock guy said, he started randomly talking about the location of a map. So Emperor Gastor had a map to some treasure that he really cherished and the old man knew about the map. Someone in a bandana recently came along and asked about it as well. And so the bandana guy I took to mean as Locke. Uh, and then there's just been loads and loads of hints about treasure hunting. So Emperor Gastor's treasure, I don't know what that's all about, but it's out there somewhere and a treasure hunter is looking for it, probably Locke. He said the map is where the mountains form a shape like a star. So I'm going to have to look out for that, but I don't really know what that means. 
Uh, but I'm assuming that means we'll find Locke wherever that is. Because, yeah, Locke is totally missing. So those are the, the party members we got. If I remember rightly, we went to Rachel, but even here in the World of Ruin, she's still in her coma. I thought we'd find Locke there with her, but he's nowhere to be seen. So I get the feeling that the main story progresses when we find him, and it's going to be a big deal somehow. At least I think that's what happened. Uh, we did find Terra back at Mobliz, uh, and she was looking after a bunch of orphaned kids. And we did a thing where the, like, the Humbaba attacked, uh, but she said, no, I'm not going to join you. So she's just sort of still hanging around there. Maybe I need to return and see something about that. Cyan, I have no clue about. He's totally missing. But actually, I do have a clue. One of you in the comments was telling me that when we entered the world of Ruin, we did it by like following a pigeon. Remember, they call it a pigeon, not a dove. So maybe, and one of you in the comments says, remember that and follow the bird again. I think that has something to do with Cyan. And I think we could have done it quite early. But I don't really know where to begin with that. So I sort of have a clue, but I'm not too sure. Uh, then the Shadow. Shadow's a crazy one. First, he was going to die in the story, full stop, unless we found this super hidden cutscene where we waited out the timer on the floating continent, and you guys told me to do that. So he survived here to the World of Ruin, and we found him. We did a bit of story where, like, he was in a cave on the Veil, and we defended him uh, from, like, a, a Bemoth, and it died and became a zombie Bemoth. But then he got injured, and he got taken, like, to a bed, and he's just recovering. We also got a bit of backstory where we saw him with his helmet off. We found out his real name's Clyde. We found out that he had a kid. But the thing with Shadow is you're supposed to get flashbacks for him by, like, resting it in when he's around. And he's around very infrequently. So I don't think I've had the whole story yet. Because I don't think I've had all of those flashbacks. Anyway, I, I thought he was going to join the team. But in a bit like the terror thing. Instead, he's just, like, in a hospital bed. And as far as I know, he's still lying there. Uh, the idea he actually ends up as a real party member after all this crazy stuff, including like the really hidden thing on the floating continent, is really awesome to me. So I'm going to keep persisting with it and see what we can do. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Strago. <laughs> this one's crazy. He's at the base of like the cultist tower, like Kefka's tower, I think, or like a cultist tower. It's some place where we, we can only use magic or something. And he won't even talk to us. Like, he's just wandering around like a mon minor zombie. And <laughs> that's it. Realm, we haven't seen anywhere. And that's it for the old party members. However, there are two Realm or... Sorry, World of Ruin exclusive characters that I sort of know about. They're both really cool. I mean, this game's full of hidden characters. Seriously, I thought Final Fantasy VII hiding, like, Yuffie and Vincent was cool. But this is on a whole other level. So, um... So let's start our first adventure here. No more, no more random grinding footage in the background. A coin for anyone who remembers what we were doing in the previous episode. Seriously. Okay, anyone remember? This sort of blew my mind in the last 12 months because I totally forgot about this. We were in the middle of getting one of these party members. We were in the middle of getting a Yeti. Remember? Yeah, a Yeti. This is crazy. So we found like a berserker ring in a cave. And when I mount, and I thought it would be just like auto berserk or something, but when I mouse over it, it said equip it to a Yeti. And then in the last episode, we went up to Nash and we fought a Yeti in a boss fight. And he was like really vulnerable to fire and poison. We managed to take him out, but after beating it, uh, it, he just caught, sort of stood there like he couldn't really communicate and they said you need Mog to speak to him But we didn't have Mog yet at that point So then we went to get Mog and when we had Mog the party was full So we had to leave Nash and then after we did that we went off and got Gao So it's just been one massive long distraction But there is a Yeti in a cave at Nash this footage here is you can see me running over to him And only with Mog in the party apparently something cool will happen So let's do that and see what we've got Oh god, I hope I'm going the right way here. <laughs> okay, this is as good a time. Like, is it in there or is it just... Uh, it has to be in there, right? Maybe we go through. This is as good a time as any to cut back in. Okay, so we're at Nash. I don't think this will be the last time we come back to Nash again. I did say I'd open this video here with us having skipped this road. And we, we've skipped most of it, it seems here. Uh, I don't think it's the last time we'll come back here because um, we had that hint that Locke could unlock a bunch of the doors. But anyway, so here's my party, all right? Just to run through real quick. Um... We have Mog. Now, I'm doing something kind of cool with Mog. There are only two characters... As far as I know, there are only two characters in the game that can, can equip spears. Uh, one of them's Edgar, who I've left back on the airship. He's at the Falcon at the moment. The other is Mog. So, Mog, if you have him dancing, you lose control of him until he, like, gets petrified or KO'd or whatever. So, you kind of... If you're going to give him spears is kind of like he's not dancing. So I don't know what I'm doing there, really, but we'll, we'll have him on spears for now. So if you guys remember, we got the Dragoon boots. 
So he's basically our Dragoon, right? Uh, the Dragoon Boots, uh, change, as it says at the bottom there, changes the attack command to the jump. So instead of regularly attacking now, he has the jump ability. Jump is just like fly in Pokemon. Like you jump into the air and you disappear and you can't be hurt. And then next turn you land down. And baseline the attack does 150% damage whenever you jump. But if you jump with a spear equipped, now that can be any spear. And my best spear, I think, yeah, is this, the golden spear. If you have a spear equipped, jump does 200% more damage. So it's just straight up double damage. And that sounds really good, but since you're spending a turn in the air, it essentially just puts you back to regular damage, right? Uh, the difference is, though, that you're invulnerable for half the time, basically. So, yeah, he's kind of our Dragoon. I and I've given him the Hermes sandals as well, and just some regular gear uh, on the armor. Um, the Hermes Sandals giving him auto haste, obviously. Later, I believe there's another relic. Something about, like, a, it's like a dragon's horn or something. And what that does is it means when you do jump, it, like, does damage AoE or something. Or it's true. I don't know. It sounds really cool. So later, we might make him a full dragoon when we get that relic. But I don't really know where to get the relic yet. We don't have it. Uh, so, yeah. So that's Mog. Next, I have not Setsa. We have Celeste. Celeste, I've got a sword because she needs a sword to keep runicking, which I'm still just getting to grips with. Um, and then the double earring combo just to boost her magic as much as possible. Not too special. Sabin as well has double earrings just to boost like his, um, his blitzes. And he's got the dragon claws. I don't know. And then Gao, who, as I say, I've been leveling. You can see now we're level 30 with Gao. He's still a bit behind everyone else. He has a growth egg. He has auto haste. We obviously can't give him a weapon. Um... Oh, we can give him armor, though. Why don't I have that? Uh, should we give him the diamond vest? We got that in the last episode. Yeah, why not? Okay, so he's got some armor, and basically I'm just having him do the cat's paw thing again with auto haste while he levels up. So that's kind of my team here. But Mog's quite cool, you know, as a Dragoon. So I think as we walk up, if I remember where we found the Yeti, well, we've got to get back to where we found Valagamander, and we'll see where we go from here. So, um... Those guys look like they are all fiery, so I'm going to cast Blizzara. I've been doing a lot of, while grinding, this auto battle thing. I can't really remember doing it earlier in the series, so there's there's Mog jumping up. Um, which is, if you tap Q, it will auto battle for you, as you can see here. And what that just means is the... Oh my god, that was so much damage. That was amazing. What that means is the... Uh, oh, nice! Mog learned a new dance! The Snowman Rondo! Awesome! He learned it from all the way up in the sky there, and thankfully he actually got a bit, uh, get a bit of XP. Yeah, it will just re-input your previous command, which just means... So, the game doesn't, like, fight faster for you or do, you know, play any more efficiently. But in terms of, like, time, it's pretty good. So, like, those blitzes, you only have to enter the blitz command once, and then you can tap Q. And <laughs> Sabin will automatically do them afterwards, which is kind of nice. Okay, so, yeah, in the last episode, we saw this guy as well, Spyro the Dragon over there. That is one of the other big things we have. So here, for example, if I just press Q, see, Gao will automatically start uh, cat scratching people. We automatically cast Blizzara here, which might heal the wolf. No, it didn't heal the wolf, but he wasn't resistant to it. And automatically queued up Aura Cannon. Pretty good, right? Yeah, okay, so there are eight dragons in the World of Ruin, I think. And they're all... we got to kill them all, basically, to... I think you get, like, some big rewards, like an Esper and stuff. That thing was, like, level 70, though, and absolutely destroyed me. So I don't think I'm anywhere near good enough to be able to deal with that just yet. But I seem to remember the Yeti was near here. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll earmark that dragon. I actually heard some really crazy trivia about those dragons as well, guys. Um, which is a bit of a shame. So these pixel remasters, the idea of them... Okay, that doesn't necessarily heal us, right? We'd have to use a tent or whatever. And I get... Uh, let's go with a sleeping bag. Oh, that's just one person's HP and MP. Actually, we don't really seem to need it. So that's fine. I'll just use it to save. So the Pixel Remasters... Wait, I only get 20 save slots? Oh. All right, I'll just go on this one here. Uh, they're remastering, like, the original from the NES and the SNES, depending on what game you're playing. Uh, which means that they don't actually include all of the bonus stuff that came out on the other remakes over the years. So when this game came to Game Boy Advance, here we are, right back at the start, isn't this lovely? When this game came to Game Boy Advance, they added a bunch of late game content. When you beat all those dragons, they added like a whole dungeon where all the dragons come back. And you know, I just mentioned like work in progress stuff. Um, 
and like uh, like weird dev stories and behind the scenes things. There's like the eight dragons you fight. There's also a ninth in the code called like the Kaiser Dragon. And um, in the Game Boy Advance games, you do this bonus dungeon after killing them all, and the Kaiser Dragon's like the last boss. And then after you beat him, there's a whole other dungeon. There's like loads of extra content. Oh god, this was where the Yeti was, right? We had to jump down there, didn't we? Um, but, and I was, I was reading about all that, thinking, oh, that'd be so cool to play, but none of it's here in the Pixel remakes. Isn't that sad? Uh, so, yeah, I think we just kill the eight dragons and that's it. We don't get any of the super cool late game things. I would have loved if that patch note had, um, had included all that stuff, but I don't know whether that's their ambition. It honestly does look to me, I'm probably going to review this game on Steam once I've beaten it, and I think I'll just recommend people play the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, the opening of the cliff, hop into it. Yes, please. And we're going to do this with Mog. Oh, God, I hope I don't need a space in my party. Oh, shit. Yeti's Cave, B1. Yeah, so where was he, though? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Was he down there? Oh, my God. Um, okay, we opened that chest, apparently. I think Mog's special equipment is around here somewhere. I don't know where exactly. The things here weren't much more dangerous, were they, than before? What was that, Friend Maker that one of the enemies just tried to use? Ilyukanas. Wait, no, no, Ilyankas is what they're called. It seems weird I'm spamming Blizzard. But it's working. Oh, we got a white cape from that. That's pretty nice. Where was he? Yeah, he's cave B1. Ugh. In the previous episode, oh my god, we're falling even lower down. In the previous episode, we did all of this already, so I don't know whether it's really a good idea <laughs> the very next for me to be bumbling around the cave. So you know what, guys? I'm going to cut until I find the Yeti. It'll be here somewhere. Or we die or something terrible happens in the fight. Oh, look, look, there is a chest over there. Maybe that's the Mog's gear. Whoa, what the? The Onion Dasher. And Anemones. I remember talking about Anemones. Oh, there we got Imped. By the way, I've also learned something really cool about Imp. Apparently, and I don't know, you guys can confirm this for me in the comments if you like. Apparently, the craziest armor in this game, like the very best armor, like absolutely gives you insane godly stats. It, it only gives you those stats while you're imped. Oh, there you go. We got two green cherries from the fight, which is good. We can use to reverse the two imps. Uh, so you have to like create builds where you're perma imped wearing the gear and there are things you can do Oh wow, we fell down. There are things you can do like build wise for that um, I think jump and dragooning is one of them, which is just nuts. Oh my god. It's a tombery. Oh Wow, we missed those before. Uh Oh, how dangerous is he? Oh Shit, he used traveler. Isn't that like um? The further distance we've moved, the more damage people take. Oh, God. What if he gives... Oh, my God. He might give us game over. End auto battle. End auto battle. We need to flee. We must flee. No. Uh, or we could try to raise. Oh, my God. Mog, please land for the love of God. Okay. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh... Oh, he's dead. Oh, my God. We got game over. <laughs> Wait. Yes. Okay. We did. Holy crap, it's a Tombery. Oh my god, are they really deadly in this game? I had no idea. <laughs> okay, so I've just done a bit of reading about the Tombery here. This is the only place in the game, except for the Colosseum, that you'll find Tombreys. They're really rare. And there's something super cool about the way you're meant to kill them. He counters with knife and uses Traveler, and Traveler's uh, any time you, like, hit him. Uh, but you can stop him from using Traveler by imping him. And I guess you kind of have a clue that you can imp him, because... Everything in this cave will imp you, except the Tombery, who is vulnerable to imp. So that's kind of the game there. At the Colosseum, where you can't control what you do, there's a whole other strategy. But <laughs> I guess we won't have to worry about that for now. That That's awesome. You know, I think in the very last episode, we saw something and I was like, wow, we've seen all of the cool anthology stuff in the game. Um... And I think one of you guys in the comments was like, you haven't seen a Tombri yet. Well, there you go. Oh, my God. That is how I would want to see a Tombri, though, to be honest. Because they are just so badass. Oh, wow. We just... We landed here. Okay, so we just need to not get unlucky with the random encounters. Okay, we found Notties this time. All right, seriously, I've got a cut. Uh, when we find the Yeti or something happens, I'll see you guys in a sec. Oh, look, nice! Okay, like two battles along. Celeste. 
Learned Firaga, Blizzaga, Thundaga. Oh, yeah. Plus, she's been getting the 10% HP. I've got to actually use that as well. One of you guys was saying you'd love to see more Esper summoning, and I'd like to use it more, too. You know, some of them give us such cool buffs at the start of fights. Okay, cool. So we can swap to... I've got to see some of these animations. Oh, my God. What a weird place for us to unlock those. Should we swap Valagamando onto someone else now? So that they can they can actually learn from it i suppose we probably should right so i think one thing that people were complaining about with the patch on the scene forums is this that the espica screen is a little bit different in the game now and what what's different about it is i don't think you can easily see the level up bonuses anymore but they kind of screwed it a bit so for example here i i can see if i equip bismarck i get breach blast slam all enemies with giant bubbles cool but I have to, like, tap Q here to actually see what he gives me on level up, which is strength, as you can see. And three spells, which we already know. I don't think I needed to do that before. Isn't that right? Anyway, uh, Mog also, while we're at it, Mog finished Zona Seeker earlier. So let's give Mog... Well, no, look, if Mog's going to be like a Dragoon... Mog's so weird. It's like, I would never expect he to be a Dragoon, I guess, because he's got the little wings and he flies. And that assists him with jumping somehow. It's weird. Apparently, he was like the face of the game in North America. You know, like, like they had um, like commercials and stuff, and he was on the box, and he was on the the guides and all that kind of stuff. When he's such like a non-character, you know, he's a missable character. Let's go with. I mean, fine. Let's do. No, no, no. Let's not do Valor Commander. Let's do Fenrir, and we'll put Valor Commander on someone else. Okay, cool. Well, that was pretty awesome. I guess I will quick save. Because uh, I am, once again, terrified of finding a Tombri. And that's right, guys. Even though I can't, we are still in that same goddamn room. How do I get that chest down there? Hmm. Oh, here we go. Actually, let's try it. Okay, so I'm thinking there'll be... we got to do fire. Fire is like the, the default. So Firaga multicast. That's not going to ruin the animation, is it? I hope she just one-shots them all. She's got two earrings. Oh, it's like a meteor shower. That's cool. Holy shit. 6k? 5k? Oh, my God. Obviously, that's going to cost a lot of MP. Whoa, that was a big hit, though. Ah, oh, I kind of want to go fight the dragon now. Okay, so taking a right, I fell. Going for that chest, I fell. The only way, then, is through this door. Oh, why am I commentating this? We did all of this. Oh, in fact, look, you can see the holes there. You can literally see them, so I can walk around it. Ah, ah we didn't do this. Oh, monster in a box. Okay, scary fight, good loot. <gasps> Three Tombries! Oh my god. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, we're gal here, so just stray cat. That's fine. Now, Mog, do you want to dance? Do you want to do like a cave dance? Which one would it be? Earth Blues, I guess, probably. Since I don't think jumping's gonna be that good. I'm gonna just try to blow them up, I guess, with let's do Thumbdaga this time. I think this is going to be game over again. Look, Sabin's already dead. He's one of my AoE powerhouses. What the hell? How do you defeat three Tombries? I need them to not use... Well, they're missing Mog, so that gives us time for Phoenix now. Wow, Thundaga looked cool. Ugh, that was only 2k. That's not good enough. Holy! Oh, oh my god. It did almost no damage. Oh, they're casting it twice there. Okay, try... I can figure out their weakness. Do you think they're weak to ice? Blizzarga? Don't die, don't die, Celeste. Oh, she's... Wow, the cat scratch missed. They don't seem to be, like, countering or anything. Another Phoenix down. I'm hoping to get Sabin up so that he can just AoE. Nice, good block. I've noticed Celeste does a lot of blocking. Okay, Mog died before he could dance. His Blizzarga. Let's check the, mo the, the money, the damage. 2k as well. It's not that good. Uh, let's Rising Phoenix this. If we can survive. That Celeste is dead. Oh my god. Oh, we're never going to do this. All right, Gal said, okay, either Sabin one shots them all with this Rising Phoenix, or he dies before he can even cast it. Wow. Wow. Okay, so that monster in a box. I bet that's no encounters in there, though. I bet that's the thing. We'll have to return for that. Oh, the world of ruin is brutal. I was feeling pretty confident. Like, we've got some cool builds going on here. Damn. All right, we'll return later. Man, the saving is so forgiving in this game. 
That's such a weird ability. Mega Volt, and he just heals himself for the tiniest amount. The game seems so weird. There's so much cool mechanics and stuff going on, and then it, you just get weird moments like that all the time. Okay, I remember this. We, last time we hit that switch up there, but you go up there to pull it, the ground below you falls away. So you don't want to do that. Oh, but then there's another switch here. So maybe we do want to do one of those? Oh my god, I have a heart attack every little random encounter we're getting. Because <laughs> I think it's going to be a bunch of dumbbery. It's proper satisfied to blow these guys up though. Wow. Oh, another level for, for Gal. Very good. Oh, well, that was our 2,000th monster. Thank you, Steam. Okay, we pulled the thing. Yeah, okay. We we pulled the Midgasorma materia out of this eye. Uh, sorry, materia. Magisai out of this eye and immediately got into the fight and couldn't really utilize it. In fact, did I end up showing it off? I don't think so because we couldn't equip it before the battle. So let's equip Midgasorma onto... Oh, I love the imp icon here. That is just so, so cool. All right, so that's the imp. Um, now that you've just learned fire there, let's... Uh, so not it's not under the equipment menu, annoyingly. It's under the abilities menu. Espers. Midgasorma. Crush all enemies with seismic, seismic waves. Now, that's already on set, sir. I guess we did equip it to someone, but did we use it? Who knows? So, Quake, Gravija. Yeah, I remember that looks insanely OP. And Tornado. Evoke scouring winds that reduce all enemies and allies to HP critical levels. Enemies and allies. Oh, we've got to see that. 30% HP on every level up. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, do we have to fight you again? Hello, I'm Mog. I'm your boss, Koopo. You're going to join us, Koopo. Koopo, po, po. And he nods. Wait, and that's it. A yeti with a love for bone carvings, stronger than a gigas, but a bit unruly. Oh my god, that's wow. Okay, so yeah, Umaro. Umaro? How would I say that? I would say Umaro, I think. So this is Umaro. Uh, I won't change his name. Is <laughs> it confirm? Yeah, some characters and symbols may not display properly. No, well, I'd hope that those ones are all right. And you're going to have to go straight to the airship. Ooh, ooh, me, or Mo. I've got to give him a different voice to Gao, right? Gao's like, ooh, and Umaro's like, ooh, me, Umaro. Yes, boss, me join you. Umaro, no sl oh, Sorry, Umaro, no slouching, Koopo. He's <laughs> slouching. Is that it? Ooh, me wait, big flying ship. <laughs> I like how he's smart enough to know to go to the airship. Like, what the hell is Setzer and Edgar up there right now? What the hell are they going to think? There we go. We got an achievement for that. What the hell are they going to think of barely able to speak Yeti wandering up just wants to go on the airship and they have to take it at face value? <laughs> they can go. That's bizarre. Because um, Mog himself is a side character that you can miss. And then they just sort of dump this Yeti in here. Is that really bizarre? I'd be very curious about what what exactly motivated them to put that character in the game. Uh, and by the way, I don't know. Obviously, I'm no guru with this, but I don't think that <laughs> Maro has much to say or do elsewise. Ah, I want to do that monster in a box. I want to kill those Tombries. I'm sure that's the No Encounters gear, but I don't think I can yet. So let's leave. Sure. Oh, and we fall down. There you go. Well, thank you, Mog, for that. It's not like anyone else couldn't have just said, you know, I'm the boss. Help me out. Oh, more test riders. So there you go. So we get our Yeti. Brilliant. Let's get out of here now and figure out what the next adventure to go on is going to be. Oh, my God. Why am I doing this? Razor Gale. Ugh. Huge command. It'll be quite exciting, actually, to see Umara as well, figure out what builds and gear we want to put on him. Because, again, he has quite unique mechanics, I think. Holy shit, he hit 4k in the back of that thing. Because we got, we had the side attack and we got to hit him in the back. Oh my god, the jump was pretty good there as well. You know, it just occurred to me as well, why walk all the way out when I believe we can just throw a teleport stone? Yeah, that's cool. We have, I don't know how often we've seen that animation. But that's kind of like your Pokemon escape rope or whatever. And voila, we're back out in the world of ruin. Let's go speak to Amaro up on the airship. i got to see this. Should we swap Mog for Umaro? No, but I like Mog with the, with the spear at the moment. But mind you, he's going to need something bonus. Is the is Umaro... Oh, look, he's over there. <laughs> this is so funny. It would be cool if he was sitting like a gentleman on the couch. Hello. Ooga. Is that it? That's all you have to say? 
Okay, wow. Umaro, the Yeti. Came in at level 33. What is that? An average of what everyone else is? Pretty good HP. Pretty good MP. Hmm. Gonna have to figure out what we want to do here in a minute. I think we'll have Gao. I might put Sabin aside for a second. I might bring Setsa back because I got a cool idea for him. Let's do Mog and Umaro. Wow, that's a crazy party there. That's a party of characters that all feel very new to the team. Or I haven't used that much of. I guess Gal. Gal I've used a lot of Gal. Right, there we go. Let's confirm. What it really is, is a team of people who can barely speak. Plus Setsa. And let's actually play as him. Where is he? There we go. <laughs> or she. I don't know, actually. Do we get a gender? Nice. That's a hell of a chest. All right. Take the wheel. <laughs> this is awesome. There should be a bunch of bonus dialogue for playing the game as a Yeti. Okay, so what I'm thinking is first, let's have a fight with Umaro. Just anywhere, I guess. But you know what might be fun? If I remember rightly, yeah, and you can see. So the golden icons are places we've been. The silver are places we haven't. Uh, which means this entire continent on the bottom left, which I think is... Obviously, there's going to be a bunch of towns here after the time skip. We've never been. So let's just land here. Not because I actually intend to go to those places just yet. But because maybe we'll get some interesting random encounters. I'm sort of sick of grinding <laughs> the old man's house. Or, you know, where dinosaurs might accidentally end up blowing me up. So yeah, let's run through and see what he's like just in a regular battle first. Okay. Man, there's a lot of the same sorts of enemies. These cats and things. Right, so uh, speaking of cats, let's do Stray Cat here. Uh, Setsu, you can do a crappy attack. Now, if I put Setsu on the team, you guys will see why in a second. Now, you notice there, I haven't given Umaro a command. Umaro just attacked straight away, all on their own. Like, with Mog, we lose control after selecting Dance. With Gao, we lose control after picking a monster. But Umaro is just going on their own the whole time. Not under, like, the Berserk status. We just do not control Umaro. Um, so I'm kind of trying to just wait here so that you guys could see what he does. So there we go. We'll roll some dice. That was pretty good. 1,800 damage. There you go. So he used Slam there. So he does have, like, an ability or two. I guess we'll do a jump with Mog. And then just wait a second here. So, and I, I, I guess I didn't put any gear on him either here. So here's kind of the deal with this character, as far as I can make out. There you go, Mog can get the final hit. Umaro, you don't control. Um, Umaro has really, really high strength. Let's look, at, let's look at his stats, for example, if we go in. Like, his strength is incredibly high. I believe, actually, the highest out of everyone in the game. And that's also true for his stamina in his defense. These are the best, like, highest base stats anyone has. But his speed, so his agility, and his magic, his spellcasting, these are both kind of mediocre. Um, so, you know, we'll try to fix the speed in some way that we can. Uh, maybe with the whole Odin thing that I talked about before. Now, with the, the low magic thing, you might think, well, who cares if all he does is just continue to spam attacks. But you actually can get him to cast spells. So his thing is, like, everyone in the game has a couple of unique pieces of gear. So, like, Mog has the no encounters gear that only Mog can equip. Um, they also have, like, their baseline, like, we what weapons and armor they can use. So Mog can equip spears, for example, while Setsu can't. There's, there's an item in the game called, like, the, the, the Perfection Badge or something like that. The tutor Tutor's Badge. I, don't, I can't remember exactly what it's called. But there's a relic you can equip, which means that, say, any Setsu could use spears with the relic. Yeah, look here. It's called the Merit Award. And apparently we can only get it at the Coliseum, which, of course, we haven't played with very much yet. But then, of course, that takes away a relic slot. So you could make Setsu a Dragoon, if you like, by giving him the badge thing and then the Dragoon boots um, and a spear, but then he wouldn't also get the Dragon's Horn because he's had to waste a slot, right? So Mog is technically going to be better. Uh, and so would Edgar as like a full-fledged Dragoon. Anyway, um, some, sometimes there are items that no one can equip no matter what, even with that badge, like Mog's Gnome Encounters thing. And Umaro has some. So let's head down. Now, we got this item in the last episode, or was it two episodes here? The Berserker Ring. And on the regular stats, it just says strength plus five, right? Doesn't seem to do much. But remember, you hit Q. This was such a game changer when I found this earlier in the series. A cri deep crimson ring that absorbs fire and negates lightning damage. Equip on a yeti and see what happens. Well, we now have a yeti. So the idea of the berserker's ring, right? We could do that. And let's give him... We do have some spare Hermes sandals sitting around, don't we? I would hope we do. Yeah, awesome. We know That's it. They're all fully equipped now. So with that... What he'll actually do now is unlock a new attack. 
And I think it might change his combat be- I'll have to edit this in here. I think it might change his combat behavior a little bit on top of that as well. No, no, no. It, it's literally, he will either attack or he'll use body blow, which we saw. And now when we attack, uh, uh, equip this ring, it throws this new ability into the mix, throw ally. 33% chance basically for any to happen. But he will get a new attack here. Also, uh, I'm a bit scared we're all suddenly really low. So let's throw a tent up here just to make sure everyone's healed up. Oh, we get the nice tent animation. Oh my God, is it a white tent? Cause we were Marrow. Are there different tents based on what character you're playing? We do get the different poses of him sitting down. Okay, so with a Berserker's ring, we get a preemptive strike. I'm just gonna wait, watch. He goes for the attack straight away. 2k damage, he's charging a bit. So he unlocks throw. I don't know whether we'll see him doing that now, but basically what he does when he chooses to throw is he will throw one of your party members at the enemy. And when he throws a party member, oh, we should deal with that petrification. There you go, no, 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 he just threw Setsa. So when that happens, it uses Setsa's stats, which is really bizarre because Setsa actually has dice. So who knows what the hell he would be doing there. So there you go, uh, cures petrification. So um, yeah, there's a lot of weird and wacky things about the fact that he can throw your, your allies. I think he, there's even a thing where maybe he can throw himself or something really bizarre. Some of the cool interactions are it will instantly free people of certain statuses like confusion um, And because it's using their stats basically if you put him in a team with a bunch of heavy hitting physical guys Like remember there's that relic that allows you to dual wield weapons Well, if he throws someone dual wielding weapons the damage is off the charts You don't really get the animation you can imagine how that would work visually But it's pretty fun and he works well with those sorts of characters But yeah, so the berserkers ring now that doesn't use magic remember I just said this whole thing is about you know He has a magic stat there is another item in the game, in some like end game cave or something. Here we go, you guys have seen, so we can start attacking now. There is another item that ca causes him to like cast blizzard or like a snowball or, or something. That frog enemy was awesome, by the way. I love the way it was laying on its back there and pushing its belly out. Um, so he does have like a magic spell, but it's really late game and it's crap, unfortunately, because once you get it, you know, he has low magic stat anyway, so the best thing for him really is the Berserker's Ring. Beyond that, you can't change his weapon like Gao. He has that bone club and that's it. You can't change his armor. You can't. He has the Snow Scarf here, which, by the way, explains his massive stats. Look, defense plus one to eight, a bit of evasion. It, this kind of gives you at a glance what he's good at and what he's bad at, minus the agility thing, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the character in a nutshell, really. I guess there's a thing going on here where he has almost no equipment, so when he throws, it's like he's benefiting from everyone else's equipment via their armor. <laughs> Another weird, like, sneaky thing that's good about him, all right, let's get back in the airship, is do you guys remember this tower that I mentioned a second ago with Strago at the base? Let's see if we can find it. This, this one I'm going to here is either Kefka's tower or it's the Strago one. Let's have a look. Um... This tower where you can only use magic, that's your only thing. It's, it's it's a struggle to climb this because you run out of MP, I think. But Amaro is kind of cool to take here because since all Amaro can do is attack anyway, he's allowed to do that in the tower and it doesn't cost him MP. So this is kind of a way of breaking the rules of this tower and you can climb. And also, by the way, the fact he does never use his MP, even though he has 419, what this means is you can actually osmos him. Um, like, if you if anyone ever gets low and you can't osmos in another thing, you can just still MP off of him, and it's fine. So, yeah, Strago, why won't you talk to me? Oh, he just he will not even say a damn word. And then there was this guy who said, for 100,000 gil, I'll tell you where there's some treasure. 100,000. We have 200k now. Last time I was here, I only had, like, 75. So that's a huge amount of gil I've earned. From what? Just getting the yay? Do you know what? I'm going to pay it. Let's do it. Oh, thanks, you're too generous, right. Oh, th we've got to give him the good thug voice. Oh, thanks, you're too generous, right, the scoop. There's an ancient castle buried beneath the desert of Figaro, and no doubt loaded with treasure. By the way, I heard the old man who lives in the weapon shop in Narsh was looking for you. What, was he? The old man in the weapon shop in Narsh was looking for us. Okay, so that thing about Figaro, um, so uh, I have spoiled something for myself here. You guys were a little bit cryptic about it. Obviously, Figaro Castle can travel beneath the sands. And um, and when we went there earlier, this was Narsh. Wait, wait, wait. The old man in Narsh? Yeah, but all the doors are locked, so I'm going to need lock to get in there. 
I can't get in there because we need lock. Wherever the hell he is. But so, this, um, <clears throat> a Figaro castle can travel beneath the sands, right? And then there's the story where it was stuck down there and everyone was suffocating. There is a thing where if you keep going back and forth, I think you find a hidden endgame dungeon. Apparently it's really difficult and dangerous in there. So, um, so I'm kind of nervous about trying it. But I think that that's what that hint is. There you go. We paid 100,000 gil for the pleasure of hearing about that. Right. Now, speaking of endgame dungeons, where was Kefka's tower? Was, was Kefka's tower over here? Ah, this must be it here, and it's in silver because we haven't actually entered it yet. Okay, speaking of endgame dungeons. Now, I don't know if this is totally right, but I think at this point in the game, we could actually end the game now, I think. We could go in there and see what we've got. Um, like, there's nothing in theory stopping us. Now, I'm going to enter because I want a treasure, so we equipped Setzer here. So, Setzer has sucked so far, and I've made, uh, you know, no attempt to hide how little I've liked playing with Setzer in the last couple of episodes. Now, you guys in the comments um, have told me about a really cool build idea, like a build path for him, and I've gone up and, based on what you guys have said, I've gone and looked at how exactly it works, and it does sound really cool. So for the, the upcoming adventures in the next episodes, I really want to set this up. You remember, actually, in the last episode, I specifically said, oh, I want to play with more dice. I want to throw lots of dice. Well, you can. And you guys in the comments were really, like, understated about how strong this is. This thing looks obscenely powerful. Like, there's a note on the wiki about this build path that says when he gets to, like, a level 50 or so, and we're not even anywhere near level 50, so whatever. But around level 50 on this build, he can start one-shotting a lot of bosses. Like, it's cr uh, as in on his one turn. Like, it's completely crazy. So, um, so basically, here's the idea. He currently has dice, right? And we had darts and stuff that we could throw. In fact, we could give him the viper darts. Why not? That's an upgrade for him for now. Darts that may randomly dispatch an enemy in one hit. Okay, cool. But what it is, is a dice build. Okay, so if you notice, he only has the one dice weapon so far. His best weapon in the game is called the fixed dice. And you find it at the start of Kefka's tower. So, let's just... Oh, I can't enter, though. Oh, well, I can't enter! Okay, so we, we're not at the point where we can go in, then. Unless there's something else I need to be able to do. This is totally it, right? Ah! Oh. oh, God, we got a random fight. Oh, well, is there any point me talking about any of this just yet, then? I've got to get in there! Okay, having looked up real quick online here... I think I remember walking into the base of it and we can enter. I think the whole point is you need the falcon first. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and now what we can do is we can enter it. Okay, so I'm not beating this. I'm just going in. Okay, all right, we're going in. And you're allowed to leave, apparently. <laughs> we are. Oh, we might get a cool cutscene here. Oh, here we go. It actually changed my active party. That's funny to almost all the characters we don't have. It's time we took the battle to Kefka's doorstep, says Edgar. Sets says, what's wrong? Celeste... The gods of the Warring Triad control the magic of the Esper world. If we destroy them, you're worried about what might happen? Oh, we gave her a, a rich lady's voice. I can't say for sure, but... There we go. Espers and magic might vanish from the world entirely. And if that happens, says Edgar, what will happen to Terra? Oh, interesting. If we had Terra already at the start of this cutscene, I wonder what she would have said. Because I assume we can get her. But she's just laying around in bed. What do you want from me? Okay, so I guess we'll keep the dream team, the the can't talk team. <laughs> you know, that's not fair because Mog can talk. All right. So it says form three parties. Oh, my God. Oh, you know, this is kind of cool. So if you don't get any of the additional characters, you're only going to have three people here. Well, hold on. Let me... Let's... Hmm, who do I want to use? Let's put Gao in party two. Like, you'd only have one guy per team. All right, and then we'll put him there. I want to use party A, I think. There we go. Let's do that. Like, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm pretty sure each party is going to be in a different area of the tower. So, I'll ha and I think it's party one that can... Because it's right at the start. So, I will keep party one with a lot of people. Assuming those guys on the left are party one, not the guys in the middle. And off we go. I really hope that next time we come back here, you know, because we're going to leave in a second, that that cutscene plays again and we get the full thing with all the characters. Oh my god, look at this face. Oh, this is cool. So we're not climbing the tower. We're dropping down the tower. All right, there you go. There's party two. Oh god, these guys are just totally alone. All right. Press the L button to switch between the three parties. Well, we're going to stay on party one here. Ooh, we're just going to kind of wing it. Um, 
Oh, God, how dangerous are these random encounters going to be? All right, that's how we leave. Good. That chest already appears to be open. Conveyor belts, that's fine. We can't go down there. Huh, is that chest already open? Why would it be? Oh, my God. Well, there's Malboros. Holy shit. Are they going to be really dangerous? Let's just throw an attack. Let's throw a jump. Also, the primeval dragon looking like a Brachiosaurus or something. That's awesome. Um, let's do... Let's do Aura Cannon, I guess. Because I'd rather the single target damage against two guys. And let's start auto-playing. Let's see what we got. Now, if we just wipe here, I might give up this whole idea. In which case, I don't know why I'd be talking to the microphone. Because I'd probably cut this whole thing out if we do. Oh, my God. Sets. Oh, but Zets only has the goddamn daggers now. Well, whatever. We're going to make Zets Zets are a god very soon. Ah, oh, he absorbs holy? Oh, well, Sets is dead. Ah, oh, I should have kept Celeste. She could have blown them up with the Gur magic. No, stop healing the Malboro. Oh, my God. Atomic Ray. Okay, okay. This is ridiculous. Stop it, Setsu now. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Poor Mario's just trying to hold on. At least Mog's hitting the uh, guy down there. Life Shaver. But is he healing from that? He is. Okay, stop this. Um, who would have thought that Malboros would absorb holy? Maybe they absorb all elemental magic? Maybe that's the idea? <clears throat> If they don't die in a second here, what I'll do is I'll Phoenix down and bring them back. Or, you know, we can just run, I guess. Ah, oh, there we go. The Malboro said. Alright, they're not that tanky then. Because that guy was getting healed a bunch. He's probably they're probably yeah, they're only a couple of hits. Alright, that's not too bad. There you go. Mogland banished. We got two levels. Very nice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Now do I have some Phoenix downs? Because I don't know if we have someone with rays with us right now. We probably do. It's that thing with this game where everyone ends up with everything. Well, of course, Amari's not going to be casting anything. So there we go. Let's cure everyone up. Now, I'm really curious about this chest. Is it really already open? Is that something about the fact that on the floating continent, we already had things done? Okay, this room... Oh, right, yeah. The arrow made me think I can go down there. Why is there a yellow arrow there as if that's going to be a zone transition to walk in that direction? This place is so messed up. Kefka, what have you been doing? Oh, well, there's a chest there. Is this, is this it? It is. Nice. Okay, there you go. Literally the first chest of the dungeon. The first chest. Okay, cool. So then we could just go items, teleport stone, <laughs> get out. Nice. Um, there you go. I hope we get the cutscene again. Um, okay, cool. So with the fixed dice... Oh, we have only Setsu with us in the party. All right, let's talk a little bit about these. Now, as you can see, it seems to drop his attack like mass massive. It says a trio of dice that deal more damage the higher number they roll. So here's the funny thing. Uh, that looks crap. If I press Q, it just says attack plus one. Um, but remember I said I wanted to throw loads of dice? The other dice he's just been rolling two, right? Well, now he rolls three, which already is pretty cool. But what's really special about these is they have a totally different damage formula, which creates some crazy synergies. So, what this does is he throws the three, and I'll tell you exactly how it works. He throws the three dice, it adds the numbers up that you got on the faces of the dice. Then, they times that value by his level, so leveling up does actually affect the damage of this thing. Then, they double it. And that will give you your your final number. So, yeah, there's a lot of variance in the damage you can do, but because you get three dice, and 999 is the top anyway, you know, pretty quickly you can quite reliably be hitting, like, into the thousands. If you get doubles or triples on the dice, which you got a chance that you're throwing three at once, then whatever number got the double or the triple, they after that, that they doubled it at the end, the value, they will do it again times the number that you got of duplicates, right? So if I roll two twos then it will take the final number and double it. If I got three threes, it will take the final number and triple it. If I got double fours, it will take the final number and quadruple it. So they have just a very special damage formula, um, which ignores like defense. It like penetrates, certain things that should slow your damage down or be accounted just aren't. It still gets doubled by Berserk, by the way. So if you throw Berserk on him and have him roll, rolling the dice, he, he'll do a lot of damage with those as well. But here's where it gets really strong. Remember I just said that things that should reduce your damage don't. So there's another relic in the game. 
It's called the Master's Scroll. I mentioned it in a couple of episodes ago when we were talking about Locke and lots of stealing. Uh, if you remember that temporary character we had, he died, General Leo. He had that. And what that relic does, the Master's Scroll, is it means when you attack, you're instead going to attack four times randomly across all targets. So you don't really get to pick your target anymore. But every one attack you do is four attacks. The counter to that is you should be doing less damage on each hit. It, like, halves the damage or it maybe even puts you down to 25%. Should... But because Sets is rolling the dice and his damage is based on the d on that formula, there's no downside. So he just throws three dice, three dice, three dice, three dice every turn. And you can make it even more crazy with some other relics. So that's kind of badass and amazing, right? So that's what I'm looking for. I think the Master Scroll is really hard to get, though. So let's head over to pick up another character now. Um, let's look for Shadow. This was where Shadow was in bed, right? Oh, this isn't where I was looking to go. Oh, see, you're the doggies. They're like Interceptor. But, uh, you know, so is Terra still here? Let me see. She's down in the basement, maybe? And then through this door over here, which doesn't even have a hint on the minimap that it's there. Hello, children. Where the hell is Terra? Is she up there? In that, in that bed up there? She's not here. Does anyone tell us? Katrin's gonna have a baby, I know, because my mum looked like that before she had my little brother. Katrin ran away because Duan wasn't being nice to her. Katrin's belly's getting bigger. Katrin's gone. So hold on, so we never finished this quest because Katrin ran away. Is that the situation? But where would she have run away to? Is it just in one of the next door houses? Did we just miss this? I don't know what to do. Karen's pregnant. Yeah, well, go find her. Find her is what you do. Are there any other buildings we can go in? Hold on. Oh, I've got confused here. Was it this building? Okay, so this is kind of amazing. I'm doing a little bit of post-commentary here. Um, yeah, apparently, Terra is hiding in this village. Last time we were here, you know, she ran off. Uh, you know, the pregnant lady ran off and Terra went off to, to find her. And you're supposed to be able to just find her here. This is crazy. I gave up and left in the previous episode. It's so easy to miss this. All these characters are so hard to get back. I love this. I can just imagine being like a kid back in the 90s. No internet, no real usage of guides, just through word of mouth. Like, oh my god, I got Terra back, blah, blah, blah. You can see there I was just looking behind that bookshelf. That is actually where we need to go, behind that bookshelf. But I missed it. So I ended up actually looking this up online. <laughs> Because <laughs> it was so hard. Apparently, what you're meant to be able to do is follow the dogs, like, out in the town. The dogs wander around and give you a clue as to where they're hiding. But that did not happen for me. I don't know what I'm missing. If you guys in the comments want to fill me in with this. Uh, but yeah, you're supposed to come into this house and the bookshelf right next to the husband... Uh, well, I mean, how oblivious is this guy? She's just downstairs there from his viewpoint. He should be able to see it just fine. I guess we'll let him off the hit because he is only 17 at, at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, you come down here. Oh, my God. That's insane. What? Uh, do I? And you're just standing there like you, you're even oblivious. Oh, my God. So I've read online. Well, I have probably already talked about that. Let's just head on down. Jesus Christ. Aha, uh -huh. hello ladies. This is not what I was planning to do, but okay, you're back! Hello, Terra. Sorry, did I give you a horrible shrill voice before? I think you can have one now. Catherine's gonna have a baby! <laughs> <clears throat> I probably gave her a cooler voice. Uh, I'm so happy that I'm going to have a child. But when I told that to Duane, he turned all cold all of a sudden. This is like uh, one of those storylines, you know, where someone gets pregnant during a zombie apocalypse and it's a huge risk and hazard, you know. Catherine. I'm sorry, I, I just didn't know how to handle all of this. I acted like an idiot, but everything's okay now. So please come, come back home with me. Oh, well, maybe it's not to do with the apocalypse at all. Maybe he just doesn't want to commit. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Are we going to have a fight? Ah, the humbap is headed this way. Oh, my God. The music. I'll keep Katrin safe. I'll be with. I'll be fine with Duanda by my side. He just abandoned you, lady. Or you abandoned him, I guess, because you came to hide down here. Please, protect the village. I don't have the strength to fight. Oh, then we're going to get Terra back, guys. She really could have been here in that cutscene a second ago, but hey. All right. Didn't look like there's anything there. Oh, God, if we can actually win the fight. Oh, why have I got Setsa? Oh, my God. <laughs> I got Setsa assuming we'd make... Well, no, we equipped the new dice. And... <gasps> Setsa's my only character. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> no. Okay, here we go. We're gonna you're gonna watch something special. Oh my god, that did 6k. You're gonna watch something special here, guys. Sets is gonna solo the humbaba. Alright, how much damage are we taking each hit? 300, that's not too bad. Mind you, we only have 1,500 health. Do we, do we even have... Yeah, we do have Hermes sandals on him. He does have gear. In theory, with these dice, I could just stack him up with defensive stuff, you know? And a bit of haste. And it wouldn't affect his damage output at all. Humbaba breath. We blocked, we blocked again. Oh my god, he's actually doing it! Wait! Oh! Oh my god, Sensei did solo it! Terra! Oh, no, 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 she's come to help us. Holy crap, she's used trance. Nice. What if I had a full party there, though? All right, so she's in trance. Yeah, but you don't have the gears or anything, do you? That's a shame. Does she have an expert? No, she does, she's not going to have anything equipped. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess bizarre. What was he weak to? Wasn't he weak to poison? Do we have poison? No, she doesn't have that. Oh, uh, yeah, no expert equipped. Um, damn, I never gave you poison at any point throughout this. All right, screw it. We'll just go with fire. and Well, uh, we could put defensives on and we could start healing. I don't want to do that, though. I don't want to ever be the healer. She's in her, like, rage mode. So we go. Fira, how much damage are you going to do? 2k? To be honest, we're doing a lot more than that, just rolling these dice in. There's 2k as well. On... Well, no, we're probably doing about that amount. I think we just got lucky before. Has he been nerfed because I only have the one guy in my party? Oh god, I just did a physical attack. Probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, 800, less than half of what we could have on that turn. I'm feeling really confident though. Look at the damage we're doing here. 300. Okay, it's probably time. Oh god, he died. How oh, really? All right, so I guess Phoenix down and that will cast instantly. And then we have to wait for someone's turn to charge. Hopefully he doesn't get targeted again. Hopefully in that frame that he was dead, yeah, the Humbaba hit Terra instead. Man, she's got a lot of defenses, it seems. Okay, and then let's just X-Potion him, because that will conserve MP. And then let's keep the attacks going. That's <laughs> such an overheal, it's unreal. That was quite a low roll. Yeah, see, that one only did 720. He's lost his haste as well. Holy crap, Thundaga. Is that going to kill him? No, he's all right. Uh, let's do Cura. Let's check his magic and what what is has he got at the moment? None. Really? You don't have a you don't Oh yeah, because we unequipped. Oh, everything's going wrong, guys. We unequipped Midgasorma from him just earlier, remember? Hmm. Right, so what's better? To spend a turn on Well, he doesn't even have haste. So whatever. Does he have poison? No. Alright, I think we just keep rolling the dice. Well, that's literally what we're doing here. <laughs> 4k. How much health can he possibly have? Uh, yeah, you're just going to have to be on um, heal duty here, I'm afraid, Terra. Because Setsa does so much more damage than you right now. That's kind of funny as well, actually, because he's been useless this whole time. We get that one weapon for him. And now he's sort of an okay character. 3k, not bad. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is a nice, simple boss fight for me to be doing. After having been away from the game for a while. <laughs> God, what, what a bunch of new abilities and commands and things are. Well, it doesn't matter, because all we have to do is keep rolling the dice. Oh, we healed him. Okay, so he heals from like... Oh, I should have guessed that, because, you know, he's using thunder on us. So that's not too good. It's a shame that in this game they don't have, like, that weakness stance. So if he's healing from thunder, there's a chance... Well, I don't know. We'll just try Blizzard. Oh, we can't. we got to heal first. How's her MP? Oh, she's perma-trance, by the way. That's not running out at all. See, the, the weird thing is, though, right? This was super hidden. If you're a bit like me... Oh, that's a very low roll. If you're a bit like me, and all you've done is... You, you've ended up doing shit tons of stuff in the world of... Do you need to heal yourself? Because you haven't healed for a while. No, I think you're okay. We can get an attack in. Um... She's going to end up low level, right? It's going to be like the Gao situation. So even though she comes in here perma-trance, like, she should be able to do a ton of awesome stuff. Oh, there we go. He's dead. Uh, you know, she's kind of ruined a little bit. I wish I found this in the previous episode when we were here. But, I mean, how could I know? That's that's crazy. All right, there you go. Humbaba, down you go. All right. I don't know what kind of conversation they're going to have. Just Setzer and Terra. I mean, how many scenes have they really had together? There's all the children. And they have seen her true form. Ah! Ah! The scary lady! 
It's another monster. It's scary. I'm afraid. She does look pissed off. Look at those eyes. Look at those angry eyebrows. Oh. This is weird. I feel like if we had other characters, their dialogue would be rolling right now. Maybe not. Maybe we're just meant to vibe. Mama, it's you, isn't it? I can tell. And now she's angry again. <laughs> For a frame she was. Huh, Mama? Terra? Mama, Terra! I, I, you gotta think about it, right? The shame she would feel because of like this Esper heritage and the whole trance thing, and they're all scared of her. She's just as bad as the monsters around. But then no, and she says, "I'll fight." I think I finally understand the feelings that's been growing inside me. It must be love. I have to fight to protect the people I love and to make the world a safe place for new lives. Duan, keep Karen and your baby safe. Children, Mama has to go away for a while to make the world a safer place for you to live. But I promise, I'll be back as soon as I can. So this is like who she lives for now. She lives for the children. Mama, I'm not gonna cry. Me either. It'll be, I'll be, so, I'll be good. So come back soon. Don't you forget, you promised. Oh God, I hope she doesn't die at the end of the story or something. Thank you. You all helped me understand what it means to love. I'll fight. I'll make this world a place where life can flourish and children can grow up in peace. I thought the whole problem was, though, that she couldn't leave because she felt duty-bound to protect them. By leaving, isn't she leaving them vulnerable? She now just believes that the parents are strong enough. Shouldn't the parents have helped us fight the Umbaba and prove their strength? I've got to go back and speak to them. Ah, oh, so do we have Terra now? We do! Honestly, I thought that she was like Shadow just sitting her. I mean, I know she rejected us. For some reason, I thought she was in bed again. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, oh, they've all left here. Is there any hidden items in here? In fact, we can tell, right? Oh, God. I have not opened the map menu for a while. It was Q. Here you go. And then tab. Chests, zero, zero. Items, one of three. Apparently, there's two items hidden around here. What is that? From, like, interacting with clocks? Maybe if we interact with that. Oh, there is one. Nice. Christ knows where the other one is, though. Unlike with my Tomb Raider Let's Play, I am not going for 100% uh, items on this. <laughs> Uh, mostly because, you know, I would do it, guys. I really would, now that we've changed the format. But, um... Oh, well, there you go. Look. Look, that's fate. That's that's fate telling me something right there. That I should do it. Uh, but a lot of them I think we've missed. Because this is one of those games, you know. There's a lot of Final Fantasies where things are permanently missable. Alright, well, what a turn of events there. I honestly thought we were going to go get Shadow there. But we've got Terra. Terra is back. And she will enjoy the privilege of going to Kefka's Tower with us. So join me next time, guys. Um, I'm going to return to this mystery of the Itchy Giki. We're going to try and figure out the Shadow story. There is still one more hidden character for us. Chris, I've got to figure out Cyan as well. Where are you, Cyan? I loved you so much. Oh, we got hints everywhere. Lots of it. And, of course, the big mystery of Locke. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, let's play Final Fantasy VI. I'll see you next time for part, what will it be, 21 at that point? Take care of yourselves now, and I'll see you soon. Can I just say, guys, I, as a bit of a reminder, because it's been a bit of a break, I know. Uh, if you look at the top of the description, there's a link to my playlists. You can hit the playlist, and you'll find this entire series to date for if you want to remind yourself of any of the videos right there in order for you.